A lot of people are confused by this because uh, there seems to be a lot of information that doesn't matter for this question. Just to give you some background, this is a question that was on one of the old practice tests for the, the, the version of the SAT before it went digital. And this set of questions had, it was a bunch of questions related to this. They used to have like multi uh, question, I guess like almost like passages for the reading section. Don't worry about it. They don't do this on the real test anymore. So you're not going to get a situation where you have just like random information like this. But this particular question is kind of individually a unit conversion question. So we might as well do it. In fact, I don't think this picture matters at all. So let's just go here. The glass pictured above can hold a maximum volume of 473 cubic centimeters. Who cares? Because they tell us that it's approximately 16 fluid ounces. Jenny has a picture that contains one gallon of water. How many times could Jenny completely fill the glass with one gallon of water? So if we're just following the normal method, right? So one gallon is equal to 128 fluid ounces. So we have a, a rate we can start with. Then we know that 16 fluid ounces. So let's use that, right? That'll cross out one of the units we don't want. But what is 16 fluid ounces? Well, this is where the, the, the chart method, the table method here can be really, really nice if we're just kind of confident in it, right? 16 fluid ounces. Some of you are going to go to, it's 473 cubic centimeters, but I don't care about that. Again, they don't ever talk about that. Um, that is the glass. So how about that, right? How about we just make one glass kind of our unit, right? It's a rate in a way. It, it's kind of a conversion that one glass is equivalent to 16 fluid ounces. Now, Jenny has a pitcher that contains one gallon of water. Okay, so that's, I guess... Uh, if we really want to do it, one gallon. Okay, so that's going to get rid of that. Now we could we could insert like a, a pitcher here. We could say one gallon is one pitcher. How many glasses is the one pitcher? So we could do that kind of two steps. In fact, I guess we'll do it. Let's just, it doesn't matter. So one gallon is one pitcher, right? And then they're asking how many times could Jenny fill the glass with one gallon of water? So another way to do it is just kind of skipped this middle step that I'm doing here, but we have one pitcher is how many glasses, right? So notice that the pitcher thing ends up not mattering. We could have kind of skipped that and just gone one gallon is X glasses from the start. But it, it, the point I'm trying to make here is this is a very flexible system. We don't need everything to be a unit like distance, time, area. You know, it, it, we have this flexibility um, where it can be really any, any kind of thing we want. If it's got a number attached to it, it could be a unit. Um, now the glasses are gone, glasses are gone. So when we solve this thing, we're just going to solve directly for what we want, right? Go down the line, multiply. So this is 16x, and then this is 128. So divide by 16, divide by 16, and x is equal to, I believe that's 8, but let's see, 128 divided by 16 is 8, and that's that. Done. Choice B. So notice again, don't panic. If, if, if one of the reasons you had trouble with this question is they're like, what's the point of this formula and all this other stuff? Just don't worry about it. This is an old question. The college board, quite frankly, was very lazy when they came up with the questions from their question bank for the math section. They basically just used all the questions from the old test that they felt they could get away with using. So some of them are very good and still are going to show up on the current test. Uh, this one would, but they'd obviously make some adjustments by getting rid of the picture or getting rid of the formula and all the dimensions. None of that matters. Um, but what does matter is this simple conversion here and get comfortable using objects as units if we need to, because it totally works. We're just thinking about it as rates. And as long as we kind of eliminate all the units in the table, we're good to go.